Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Dear viewers, welcome back again to Youth Hour. Uh, I'm so happy to have Ali Khan Bay with us. You know, I'm so uh, I'm still surprised you you know accepted my invitation. Thank you. you. We used to see you in the sky and then Channel 4 and BBC. <laughs> you know, mashallah, you do a lot of good stuff. Oh. Ali Bay, please introduce yourself to our viewers, and that will be very interesting. Thank you. I'm sure. Uh, myself, Ali Khan, and uh, I'm a caterer basically, and the investor. I invest in property business. And I'm a senior vice president of Bangladesh Caterers Association, and also I represent one of the region, which is called East of England region, as a president. Thank you. You know, um, thank you for making time. Thank I know you. it was difficult for you even today. Uh, you're, you're supposed no, to be home six, but yeah. I know it's the traffic in London is difficult. Yeah. Um, Oliver, um, we were talking about youth okay. after leaving their education. Mm -hmm. um, it's an issue to finding a job. But also in the same time, you're, you're from the food industry. Absolutely. You, s you guys are struggling for, you know, for Stop people prices. to work for you guys. You know, yeah. you, you, so why, why do you think is the issue like that? Well, basically, um, our young generation, they are getting uh, highly educated. Because uh, like when our father or forefather came to this country, they had to struggle a lot. And, uh, like, um, and then they've actually word hugged and uh, they have established a car industry. And uh, since then, they have established their career industry. They was thinking that when you have our children, our young generation, they actually, uh, they want everyone to be educated. They want their children to be educated and then they work a uh, better job, you know, nine to five job and they earn better money and they also go to somewhere that where they can actually um, highlight the Bangladesh as well. So uh, that's why um, ma mainly our uh, older generation, they are thinking. And, and that's why a lot of our, as you can see probably, uh, if a few years back, if I tell you about the education in our uh, Bangladeshi community, in, f um, in uh, economics, uh, e The Economist magazine has published a article about the education in this country uh, in terms of Asia and uh, like other places. And in there, they have actually said the Bangladeshi are the second uh, uh, position in terms of education. They are doing really well. In, in education. So this is why I think even though like uh, as you have probably seen this year's results is so many every family has like you know they have a lot of uh, that that those youngsters actually doing really well in educations. So they are actually diverting they're actually not coming back to the industry they're not coming to the carry houses you know that doesn't matter because they have done a higher education and these are the actually job for those people who actually um, are like uh, not done too much education or uh, they are like it's, it's sort of like a quite a um, when you work in a hot environment in a kitchen it's, it's quite uh, hard work as well and also it's not a quite it's quite social hour because uh, normally restaurants open from uh, 5 30 6 o'clock till about 12 o'clock you know so there's a lot of uh, issues like you know but this affair people mm. think we might lose it it's industry of what nearly <coughs> 5 billion pounds Yes, 4.5 billion industry uh, and it, is, it exists in this country for uh, the first curry came over 211 years ago, you know, when it came to this country. And uh, basically, mm, uh, this industry contributed 4.5 billion to the British economy, employ about 150,000 people. But the problem is uh, we are not getting many youngsters in this industry. Some, some places we have seen, it's only minimum, like I would say about 5, 6 percent mm. people are coming, back no, but not all of them. And mainly our children are uh, hi getting higher educations and they're in like every sector, every field, like, you know, lawyer, barristers, um, yeah. you know, like uh, in, in, in higher position, maybe somebody in like so many different posts, you know what I mean? I think there are a lot of <coughs> positive and negative part. Positive oh. is, you know, the curry industry kept us a unity within us. Mm, it kept us linked with our mm. own, you know, Bangladesh and mm. everything else and the culture, everything else it did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think... Um, it's, it's a good thing a lot of people are becoming martial education. It's mm -hmm. very, very good mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of new people, actually, they're trying new things. You know, like mm -hmm. they are doing a lot of Turkish probably, are doing some Indonesian food or Thai mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. But they're also failing as well because mm -hmm. it's a new, new thing for them and new area for mm -hmm. our Bangladeshi background uh, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters who was doing it. Why do you think in any, any business, what, what, what do you think, because you guys are successful, you've done well. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we are failing? Why do you think some, some cases? Well, um, I say we are not actually failing because first of all, we have created this big industry. 
As you can see, there is a Pakistani in here. There is a uh, Indian are here. They, they have been failed. They haven't done any industry like this mm. because we are at the minimum of the people. Because if you think about the Indians, if you think about the Pakistanis here, yeah, Indians more than uh, more than a million, I would say, in, in this country. Uh, we are only 600,000, yeah? So if you see in the success of the Bangladeshis, I would say even more than Indians. If you see that, think about the uh, popularities, popularities, yeah? The, uh, in terms of education, yeah? where we are now. We are doing very well in terms of education. Yeah? So our children are actually going different places. I don't know whether you know, in Canary Wharf, in about 10 years ago, there was an, uh, like uh, only a couple of hundred people was working, like in, in Bangladeshis. Now within uh, like that area, there is a thousands of people are working, mm -hmm. Bangladeshis. Yeah? If you think about the Tower Hamlet Council, before Mayor Lutfur Roman came, there was only a couple of hundred people working. And since then, the Tower Hamlet Council itself have got about 4,000 employees. Bangladeshi people are working in there. You know, a lot of people are actually involved. So our, uh, you know, peoples are actually working in different fields, different uh, areas. Now, when you say about the curry industry and say there's, there's a lot of failing, because it's the issue is the curry has been popular. It's been popular for so many years, so many times, you know. I mean, it's been a long, long time. And you probably know the um, national dish is the chicken tikka masala or the chicken jal fries, you know. They are very popular dish, you know. Uh, the <laughs> thing is... Depends who's making it. Yeah. It's you. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, so um, the thing is like, uh, it's the problem. Uh, we face this sort of problem every 10, 15 years. You know, like when you see the recessions. Mm -hmm. The recession times, we actually face those sort of problems. And uh, at this moment, this is one of the worst problems the industry have seen. Because the curry uh, is a problem with the stuffing. We can't get enough people because none of the people are coming from back mm. home. That's the main issue. The government have actually um, uh, put a restriction in, 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 in uh, immigration. So those people are, like before we Brexit from the uh, European Union, there is an issue like, um, uh, you know, those uh, skilled migrant worker, the tier two. It used to be 18,700 pounds for a chef, a, a experienced chef. This has been increased from 18,000 to 29,000. Mm. And then if you don't provide them the food and accommodation, then it's 35,000 pounds. Why is in this country, average salary is 25,000 for a chef. So why this is like 35,000 for chef from South Asia? This is yeah. completely ridiculous. This is the government, you know, they actually doesn't want anybody to come from Bangladesh or India, you know. So these are the facts actually affecting the industry. Thank you. I'm going to come back to you, sir. Yeah. So Rick Bhai just, I'm sure you mm -hmm. want to say something. <laughs> so, you are the third generation of, you know, um, UK. Like, uh, I was the second, you're the third one. Mashallah, you're doing very well. A lot of young people are doing very, very well in their education, you know. But business is something is very important as well. Absolutely. Because without business, you don't become a millionaire. Mm -hmm. You can work and have a good life, but with that, that thing, you, it's very difficult to mm -hmm. raise your community. It's very important to do that. Um, you choose a different way, mashallah, you want to fly and <laughs> <laughs> you want to give people a nice smell, that's good. Um, where did you get your courage from? I mean, especially flying thing, I don't know. It's Look, um, mainly with the flying thing, it's, it's been a personal passion of mine anyway. So, you know, I thought, well, if I'm going to do something, then I, I would one, one day, ultimately, I want to I wanna launch an airline that will, you know, serve people and obviously you've got a lot of problem like you know mainly you know the third world countries you know say for example us Bangladeshis we're living in UK you know if we want to say go to Bangladesh or something then we are we are kind of stuck in a love-hate relationship with our flag carrier you know we have no other choice but to use them if you want to go to where you want to go to and if you want to go for other options then you go with Middle East and then you end up in Dhaka, and then you know from Dhaka to your place, maybe it's, it's going to be another six to seven hours if you are taking road, and if you are waiting for another flight, maybe you know you're not going to get a flight same day. Maybe you're going to get a flight two days later. So there's a lot of problems within the airline industry or the aviation industry, and this is what what I want to tackle. I mean, Bangladesh is not one of the only destinations that we want to tackle. You know, this is one of the destinations we were targeting. West Africa, we're targeting North America, we're targeting, um, you know, Middle East, um, Pakistan. Pakistan, there's what, more than 1.3 million Pakistanis living in UK. At least 270,000 of these British Pakistanis travel to Pakistan. How are they flying? Obviously, they are either flying with PIA, same situation as B1. So, 
there has to be a solution and I, I find it very kind of you know I can't accept it because why is it that you know we have to accept you know we pay thousands of pounds on an economy ticket and we still you know don't get what we want and it's unacceptable and you know I guess you know that's where where my passion becomes a bit more kind of um, it turns into a business idea and I think with any business if you don't have a problem and if you're not solving a problem then you know I guess you know you'll have difficulties in in you know turning into a big business. Sounds like you, know. you know sounds like you've done a good research I'm sure you got your plans ready before we went to the break I was gonna ask you this is a teamwork in your home yep. so in your team you have your younger brother older brother and mashallah we got Sassi as well mashallah yes, that's yes, good yes. so how do you you're the team leader, I'm assuming. How do you do that? Because teamwork, without teamwork, you can't do it yeah, much. Absolutely. You're yeah, not going to go very far. I think it's, it's more to <coughs> do with diplomacy. You know, everyone has ideas. And I was saying, like, you know, if, every I if you want to implement every idea, then, you know, it becomes something else. You know, you can't do it. And look at any successful business, like any successful business that has become big, you'll see one leader, you know, one visionary leader who leads the way and he ha he delegates all the tasks to the relevant people so within our family like the way we work you know is me and my youngest brother who has always been in the show and we've always been kind of involved been involved so it's us who kind of lead the way and the other other one, other brothers you know they've got other things going some are imam some are traveling some are edu uh, in education but even when they were they are here they still say look you, this is what we expect this is the vision this is the you know kind of mandate these are the rules and regulations don't exceed don't break any of these rules and just go and do whatever what you need to do and that's a very good way and I think with any business even if it's not a family business say for example with 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 the airline project I will be dealing with a lot of investors a lot of people will be involved in this project and you have to have a outstanding leadership skills it's not so much about telling people do this do this do that or oh, I don't agree with you and you know it's not gonna work well fine I'm gonna quit then no you have to always con constantly convince people pitch to them you know tell them why your way is the good way of doing things and if you if you fail in doing that then you know I think you will fail as a whole and you can't do anything by force you have to show like you know whatever you are suggesting you know is credible and you've done your research and you know it makes sense do you also just for your research do you go to see other business models for yourself just yes. to get you know brainstorming like this is today good, this is actually bad. this morning I've posted a photo on my social media um, and there was photos of many books that I read so for example now I'm going into aviation I'm studying people like Michael O'Leary the the guy who runs Ryanair I want to see how he optimizes his business I want to see why is it that he's, he's, he's operating a low-cost airline and how is he so profitable and how is it that he manages such a big operation as a one man sitting on the top I'm studying people like uh, Gordon Bethune I'm studying other people like you know who's been there done it. why reinvent the wheel again you know when when it's already there just go and learn from them Humble and for me good. it's like you know I should be humble like you know I shouldn't just pretend I know everything it's all about learning and I'm sure if I will agree, no, no, you, know, you can't 100%. just pretend you know everything mm -hmm. if someone has a better idea accept it simple mm -hmm. I think that's, that's quite unique actually, um, you're yes. doing the research and l learning about those guys, the mm -hmm. successful guys. Olibay, you know, I don't know where you got your time from. Uh, you, you was in France the other day, I think. Yes, I just came here. yesterday, yeah. You came yeah. yesterday, mashallah. I know you also go to the un um, university or schools, teach kids mm -hmm. how to cook, you know. What's it like? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really fun because you have to have a passion to do things like that, you know. And um, recently I have done one in my local school. There's like 150 uh, 50 children. They are between five and seven years old. And they wanted to know how to cook curry. So I went there and there's a lot of restriction as well because they are very young children, you know. So whatever you cook, it has to be like full hygiene standard and then they have to check everything, you know, because, they, they are because there's 150 young children that are involved in the school. So what I have done, um, I, because I'm in, in terms of hygiene, I'm quite um, 
uh, you know, like um, good on those things because I've been doing the business for a long, long time and I have also have uh, skills, like I have done some training in advanced food hygiene. So I know a lot of the things, a lot of the area in that sector. So what I have did, I um, have actually cooked some chicken biryani because I have to do something very simple. They said they can only uh, try a small amount, not much. So I have cooked a chicken biryani with a vegetable um, uh, bhaji, yeah. And when I cooked it, because you know the biryani makes a very distinguished flavor, isn't it? It's like flavor is yeah, everywhere. You feel hungry now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know the biryani I made, and then I give it to everyone. They tested it, and they said they want more. Everybody wants more. Okay. <laughs> so I've given them, and some of the children they came to me only. I love you. I want some more. Can I have take some more for my mom? Can mm -hmm. I take some more for my uh, parents? And I was really, you know very touched with those young children actually they're li loving the curry and many of the children they never had the curry before you know but since they eat the curry a lot of them that uh, actually within that week i've seen a lot of children have actually bring their parents in my shop and tell them uh, i want to try ch all this chicken biryani and go way. there <laughs> so this is like this is a way like you know actually t teaching those young star like you know to e eat curry, m eat more curry, more rice, and they're healthy options, you know, because I did this uh, biryani with like, I didn't use any ghee or butter, you know, I just uh, did it with the healthy options, you know. I used uh, extra virgin olive oils, which is got really okay. less sat saturated fats in it. So it's really good, you know, for the young children. And it's really good. I was going to something really ambitious thing. I was going to mm. ask you actually, yeah. um, I'll do it in Bengali, because I've never like not I'm either BC Air, you know, mm. vice president. This, yeah. this is the biggest, richest group of brothers, mm. our Inshallah. leaders actually they are. Absolutely. They are um, doing a lot of things together. Mm. And uh, when I saw you in the Facebook, you went to see Nadia when she became a celebrity. Yeah. Mashallah, mm. she's doing well as well. We need mm. to bring our new people into the limelight in the mainstream. Definitely. Without that, we, we're going we're gonna to struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, mm. any kind of skills, they're doing well. Mm. Let's put them there. Absolutely. So I can see you, you struggling for that. So, um, so I just want to ask you, so, do you guys have any plan mm. to how to get our young third generation into the mainstream? Okay. In that sense, when you're saying to for those plans, because I, I don't know whether you know, I am also involved in UKBCCI, yeah. which is an organization that for the, it's, it's a chamber of commerce, and they ha actually have a vision uh, to actually encourage those youngsters and take them back home or even uh, connected them with the higher levels of like um, uh, the the big companies in here they are like uh, like the, those directors are actually within that board they have a lot of uh, businesses big big businesses and they are also in, in the rich list so what they're actually doing they have a, um, a link project it's called a link project so what they're going to do like youngster our our youngster who's actually looking for a job and can't find a job so they can link a project between like uk or bangladesh or uk mm. to uk so that uh, they can actually get those young star and they can recommend them to a company, a, a um, big company that uh, or the field they're actually looking for a job. Say, for example, somebody looking for accountancy in that firm or somebody is looking for a want to become a, a, a professional uh, businessman and he wanted to know more about uh, one of the big company or something. They can actually introduce them to those companies. But I want to come back to you because it's quite interesting to know. Yes, it is. Uh, so everybody, we're going to go for a break after two mm -hmm. minutes and you'll be off. I want you to say something to our viewers, especially mm -hmm. young people. Okay. If they fail, how do they come back again strong? What do you do? I guess if you fail, then you just <laughs> jump back up again, you know. There is no two ways about it, you know. Mm. You have, for ex like for me, I have a purpose in life. Obviously, ultimately, we want to die as you know Muslims, and you know we want to go to paradise and everything. But in life, you know, if I'm gonna kind of live my life anyway, if I am gonna think anyway, then I might as well think big and do something big and make something make something remarkable happen, and then you know, kind of live a comfortable life but until then you know it's, it's a constant tr struggle i face setbacks day in day out every single day i mean i get really happy when i have some accomplishments you know i really become happy because being in like you know say the uh, venture that i'm going for airline industry you face obstacles all along the way and that's why you see not many people do it and the, what the guys that do make it mm -hmm. they make it big so for me, it's a constant struggle, 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 and there, you know, nobody. Some things can help you, like your family. If you have a wife, 
she can help you. You know, if you have support, friends, family, they will encourage you. Look, you know, you can really do it. You can do it. Have much time. So thank you for your time for with us. Inshallah, I'll, I'll probably have to get you back again. We have done halfway through. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, Allah. Shalom. 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 Shalom.